So we've got to get away from this IRE, this Initiation Response Evaluation. That's what researchers call what they see in classrooms. Teacher says something, initiation, student responds, response, teacher evaluates, IRE. I call it serial table tennis. We, what we need is more basketball. So I ask you a question, I'll ask you what you think of his answer, and I'll pick on you for an explanation. One teacher, she calls it pose, pause, pounce, bounce. Pose the question, pause, pounce on one student, and bounce that student's response to another student. And you can actually see her doing it. Pose, pause, and she actually got this little thing she says under her breath. One, two, three, four, got to wait a little more. <laughs> because she knows that's the only way she can slow herself down. No hands up except to ask a question. If you're not doing that, if you're not emphasizing that in your own classroom, your results are going to be worse than they would be otherwise. The most natural script in the world. I, mean, I get depressed by this. When I, when I do a talk and they have a holding slide to show I'm an educationist, what do they show? They show a board, an adult at the front, and kids with their hands raised like this. The, and that looks like a good classroom because all the kids have raised their hands. It's completely maladaptive. Why? Because the research on intelligence shows that, yes, environment causes intelligence, but intelligence causes environment. What they find is the Head Start works while the kids are in Head Start, but if they go back to the environments they were in before, all the gains they make in terms of IQ go back, uh, are lost. If they learn to read in Head Start, they keep that, but the gains in cognitive power are lost because they're not being challenged. Bruce Biddle reckoned that low-quality schooling will cost a kid six IQ points a year. In England, we have found that a kid who is at the top 10% of cognitive development at age 22 months, coming from a working-class family, will be overtaken by a middle-class kid in the bottom 10% of cognitive development at 22 months by the age of seven. So one of the slowest kids at 22 months in a middle-class household will overtake one of the smartest kids from a working-class household. And it's because those kids aren't getting the stimulation.